One of the things I love most about psychedelics is that they've just got this ability to completely surprise you. So even that when you think you're like comfortable with the psychedelic experience and you kind of know what to expect, sometimes something just happens to completely just turn your sort of ideas on the head and make you realize, holy shit, there's just, there's just so much kind of depth to these experiences and it's, it's a very humbling thing. And I had one of these experiences last night. So probably you know, less than like sort of about 12 hours ago, I took five grams of, of mushrooms, dried mushrooms, and had what I can describe, it's a kind of a cliched phrase, but one of an extremely powerful experience, but an experience nothing like, or nothing like ever, anything I'd ever had on mushrooms before. So I'm going to try and describe this to you now. This is quite, it's still going on in my head. It's, everything's still very kind of raw and close to the surface. So this might be a little bit more rambly than usual, but I just feel like I'm just going to try and get this out and, and work through it as I, as I talk through it. So to put it in a nutshell, this experience last night was one of the most difficult experiences I've ever had on psychedelics. It's possibly the most difficult. It was an extremely dark, emotional experience it, you know some people could have described it as, as a bad trip it was not pleasant uh, by any stretch of the imagination it was from immediately from the get-go I was just overwhelmed with feelings of anxiety and this kind of then progressed into feelings of sort of loneliness and abandonment and, and anger and rejection it was just the whole experience was just this primal ball of raw emotion and that was very unusual for me particularly with, with, with mushrooms mushrooms are usually sort of um, there's a lot more of a visual element to them they're quite sort of um, quite fun quite mischievous um, but this from the get-go it felt closer to to ayahuasca it was just very little going on visually but emotionally, it was just this maelstrom, just this swirling vortex of things. And yeah, it really took me by surprise. Um, it, it's actually, just to give a bit of background, it, it's been a while since I've, I've actually done any psychedelics. Um, just because of this has been a funny year, I, it started off the year where I, was, I planned to go on an ayahuasca retreat uh, that fell through. I had some medical problems, so I couldn't go. That was in January. Then I did some uh, some mushrooms sort of earlier in the year um, to try and do this kind of like five grams in the dark, blindfolded experience. That didn't really take off. It just didn't go anywhere. Then this whole coronavirus thing hit and I've just, it sort of work was very stressy. So it didn't feel like it was a good time to do psychedelics. But then this, this kind of, we're coming out of this kind of pandemic, at least where I live anyway. And so I felt this was a good time to sort of get back on the horse. So yeah, last night um, I, did, I did five grams of mushrooms. It was uh, just me. My wife was sort of trip sitting me. And yeah, it just completely kicked my ass. Um, so I'll try and describe how it played out. So not usually when, you, when you're coming up on some kind of psychedelic, you get these kind of few fleeting moments of anxiety where it's like, whoa, whoa, here it, here it goes, you know, and you're kind of like, you might have a little bit of nausea, a little bit of discomfort, but it passes and you kind of, you get through it and it becomes kind of very awesome and very sort of, wow, this, this is cool. This, that's not what happened last night. For me, that this kind of, the, the feelings of sort of anxiety sort of kicked in and just escalated and... I was, I was kind of sat in there thinking, is this going to pass? Is this going to pass? And then I was realizing I was about an hour into it and it was, the anxiety was, was just sort of breeding and, and like self-evolving. And I was, I thought, okay, oh, this is, this is it. I'm going to have to go through this. This, this is the experience. And I didn't, it was, as I say, very unpleasant, but I thought, okay, I've got to try and use this somehow. So I sat there, I was, as I was lying there, just feeling just extremely uncomfortable, extremely unpleasant. I was thinking, okay, I was, why am I feeling this? What's going on behind this anxiety? 
and you know, there's part of you where it's at the beginning where it's just saying, it's a drugs, it's a drugs, you've, oh, you've done this to yourself. And I kind of thinking, no, no, the, you know, the, there's nothing inherent to this substance that the anxiety is, isn't part of the package. The anxiety is coming from me. So I've got to try and find out what's, what is this? You know, I'm, I'm going to try and get to the sort of root cause of it. So I was kind of exploring that myself. I was, I was sort of diving into it. And my wife was there sort of tr coaching me through it, sort of encouraging me to, explore it and the further I went into it it just again this, this feeling of anxiety then became this feeling of sort of loneliness and abandonment and rejection which I don't for any of you guys who've, who've you know seen some of my other videos you'll know that um, my mother committed suicide when I was a very small child and so it's no surprise that these these feelings of abandonment and rejection and loneliness were sort of were there buried deep within me um, but you know that happened when I was a you know, like, like sort of three, four years old. And here I am now in my, in my 40s. And I'd kind of built this, this kind of barrier bet between that moment of my life and this moment of my life, just in order to be able to sort of get through it. But last night, that barrier just got smashed open. And it just came flooding out. And I've never it experienced something so primal and raw. And it was, it was, it was overwhelming. It was terrifying. It was, I didn't know how to cope with it because I'd spent my entire adult life behind this, this kind of shield of blocking this stuff out just so I, that I could sort of function on a day-to-day -day, um, basis. And yeah, it just, it just hit me in the face last night and I realised how much I'd been bottling all this stuff up and as I mentioned, nothing particularly visual was going on here. In fact, there was, for a good portion of the night, I had my mindfold on, mindfold. So I had that on to sort of black everything out. And that was really helpful to help me sort of focus. But uh, yeah, this, this raw feeling of a, of a kind of an, uh, a child's sort of anger and fear and... and and loneliness at the loss of a parent just absolutely floored me. Um, and it, going through it, it was horrific, uh, utterly horrific. One of the most difficult experiences I've ever had. But I don't like this. I don't particularly subscribe to this idea of like, you know, a bad trip, that this was just something, this was like an experience to be written off. Um, I actually feel a lot better for it today. It was very therapeutic to go through this, but I mean, shit, I'm going to have to really sort of work out how I feel about that because I'd, I was just completely um, emotionally unprepared to just get hit by that kind of like tidal wave of just primal, I think. You know, there's some moments in your life where you feel something, say, like like fear, like a very primal fear, and it it, it takes over you. And you know, someone could say to you, "Oh, well, you know, calm down. It's you know, it's okay." But when you're in it, when you when you're in that moment of pure fear, you can't just calm down. You can't just you know, it's you may as well you know, t tell the gazelle that's being hunted by the lion, "Oh, calm down." You know, it's like. You can't. There's some kind of fight or flight thing going on there. It's very, it's very hard to sort of step back and be be the sort of rational observer of that sort of moment. You get this a lot with you know when, when people talking about um, being on sort of drugs or psychedelics or whatever, and and they're freaking out, and someone says, "Oh, you're you're just on drugs." You're just like, that's not helpful at all because yes, you might be on drugs or you might be on something, but. In that moment, you are experiencing something. The thing that got you there doesn't particularly matter. You can't just rationalise yourself out of it. You can't just logic your way out of it. Oh, yes, I'm just on drugs. So this terrifying feeling of being raped or something, just, oh, well, that's just silly. It doesn't work like that. You, you are experiencing something visceral. And that's how it was for me last night. So, yeah, I kind of, I was... I was doing a lot of kind of like inner child work. I was, I was kind of talking to myself as a child and feeling this, you know, this, this raw emotion of this 
and realizing the kind of compromise that I'd had to make to myself, you know, when you, when you were, when you are a kind of kid and you've lost a parent and all this kind of, you know, just this utter confusion at what's going on. A, a, a child really can't compartmentalize that. You, you, you have to sort of, you either sort of get dragged underneath it, you know, dragged into the deep waters, or you build some kind of barrier to, to, to sort of sh shut it away just to be able to get on with your life and, and function as a human being. And I realized that's, that's what I've been doing. And I think, you know, in hindsight, I've been quite, it's been a very effective tactic to, um, just to wall all that stuff off. But yeah, man, when it, uh, when it sort of landed, it, it, was, it was brutal. I guess when I've been talking about a lot of this, what happened last night, it might sound sort of quite morbid, you know, I've been talking about these feelings of like loneliness and rejection. It sounds like something to be avoided, but the thought occurred to me that there's, you know, these kind of moments of, um, you know, when you, when you have some of these, these events, like, you know, the loss of a loved one or heartbreak or something, these are the moments when you can feel, this is when you can feel the most human. It's when you really, it, it brings you into yourself in, in a way that's very hard to connect with most of, most of the time. This feeling of just this, this in your stomach, this raw, just pure emotion. And there's something kind of beautiful to that. And that's, that's why I don't view this last night as a, as a negative experience. I think part of my issue is that because of what happened to me as a kid, I'd kind of built up these you know, emotional firewalls. And... It just, it, it kind of protects me in a way, but also inhibits me from feeling those kind of, of emotions. And one thing that happened last night was, uh, there was one part where I was just sobbing. I was just crying and, and I, I, I just don't cry. And I don't say this is some sort of like, you know, macho sort of point of like, you know, a pride. It's actually a, a sort of a source of great frustration for me because, you know, people, people, you know, I've lost people in my family, and you know, yeah, yeah, there's things where I attend funerals, or, or I'm at a moment where I realise I should be having a, a sort of a more emotional human reaction to it, and I just don't. I just cannot. I just kind of choke up these. I don't even choke it up because that, that sort of implies that I'm consciously suppressing something. It's not that at all. It's I just don't feel anything. And, you know, like say when, when my grandmother died and I love my grandmother and, I, and she, you know, she did so much for me in my, in my life. And then when she died and I felt like I owed it to her to have some kind of emotional outpouring. And I just couldn't. It didn't come. I was just, I, I, I didn't know what to do with myself. And it made me... It didn't feel good. It made me feel alien that I couldn't just do this simple human action. So this last night, as, as I was experiencing this flood of loneliness, rejection, anger, fear, abandonment, it felt good to be able just to feel these things because I don't normally. I, I didn't want to feel them, but I realized like how much of a necessary part of my human experience it is and how much I've been kind of like I say walling myself off from that and I certainly didn't want to receive it in kind of like the Niagara Falls of emotion that I got last night but there was a it was therapeutic there was a catharsis there as I as I sat there and I, and I could feel these tears pouring down my face and I felt that sort of sadness and loneliness I felt there was a fulfillment to it and again I don't I don't want to come across I don't that this is you know some kind of you know, masochistic that I wanted to feel bad or that I'm sort of, you know, advocating that it's sort of, you know, it's it's good to lose people just so you can feel emotional. But it is part of the package of being a human being. So, yeah, but it, extremely therapeutic. I, there's, I feel like I've just kind of like scratched, you know, Scratch the surface there. I'm, 
I really want to sort of explore this more. And again, this seems very counterintuitive because this was, by most people's standard, a bad trip. This was, um, yeah, just hours and hours of a dark, scary experience. But uh, I think this is, yeah, there's a, I've been meaning, meaning to make a video for a while all about bad trips and how, you know, I, I don't necessarily believe that, you know, a a bad trip is necessarily a, a bad thing. It's definitely an unpleasant thing. It's definitely, a, you know, it, they can be the worst experiences of your life, but there is some therapy there. I mean, therapy is meant to be difficult. You go through the difficult thing to come out the other side of it. If you don't go through the difficult thing, then I, you kind of just doing what I did as a kid and masking over it. So there's definitely some benefit here to getting through this and I'm grateful. I'm, I'm, I was really grateful for the experience. The other interesting thing with it was, is that um, as I felt like I'd got through the, the main parts of all this kind of like emotional turmoil, um, I, I started like purging and this was very reminiscent of ayahuasca, of being at an ayahuasca ceremony. In fact, I was having flashbacks to being in the jungle and being in these ceremonies where there's some points in these ceremonies where you look around the Maloka and it's just controlled chaos going on or, or barely controlled chaos. You've, you'll have a shaman sort of singing and just you look around and there's just people are sat there just throwing up and all you can hear is this bleh, bleh, and you're just thinking this is madness. This is absolute madness. But, uh, but you're kind of at the same time you're also throwing up and you're sort of you're feeling how relieving it is to get this stuff out of you. And there was one point in this experience where I started having a very sort of stomach pains. I started getting a headache and I went to the bathroom and I thought, I, I need to purge. I need to like, like when, you, when you're on ayahuasca, sometimes you just get the thing like, I cannot fight this. I need to get it out and it's relieving to get it out. And I've never had that on mushrooms before, this, this kind of need to purge. Um, but yeah, last night I did. And the whole thing, like I say, the whole experience, how it was not very visual, very emotional, very primal, this purging element. I I could have believed last night that I was on ayahuasca. It felt so close to the ayahuasca experience. It was even though I describe this as like a you know a dark experience, I'm I'm looking forward to sort of exploring this further. I feel like it's done me a lot of good, a lot of benefit. I feel like this really sort of reveals, you know, what I've been saying for a while, the, the kind of like the amazing positive benefits of psychedelics is that it, it does it pops the cork on all this stuff it just you know it shakes the bottle it pops the cork and all this stuff comes flooding out and if for, you know for some people that's a good thing because you, you're ready to deal with it for some people that can be very destabilizing so you know i always say these things aren't for everyone um but for me that's what i needed last night um I'm really going to have to sort of do a lot more processing and integrating on this. So yeah, I think I'll leave it there for the moment. Um, and then once I've had a chance to sort of to really integrate it, I'll, I'll put something more structured together. So I hope this wasn't too rambly. Thanks for listening. And yeah, I will see you guys next time. Mm.